Hello and welcome to Hoffmann Photography. My name is Rainer. I'm a photographer and photo instructor. If you ever wondered about those strange f-stop numbers, here finally is the explanation. The f-stop numbers indeed seem a bit strange. Quite strange. Let's be honest. But with the help of some 7th grade mass, don't panic, they do make a lot of sense. So let's have a very close look at the numbers. Here are the standard f-stop numbers from 32 down to 1.4 that you hopefully know. But there are a few more f-stops which you won't find on most lenses. The f-stops here on the left in blue are reserved for lenses for large format cameras and you won't find them on the lenses for your digital camera. Lenses with maximum apertures or lens speeds of f1 and f0.7 do actually exist. However, these lenses are either very expensive or in the case of f0.7 custom made. f0.5 is a theoretical case, but more about that at the end of the video. But let's take a closer look at one of the f-stops, f1.4. This f-stop is very informative for understanding f-stops in general. 1.4 is not quite complete. If we look closely, there are an infinite number of decimal places. And no, this is not pi, but the square root of 2. Let us first imagine a square aperture with an edge of length 1. Since the amount of light hitting the sensor is proportional to the area of the aperture, it is proportional to 1 squared, and that is, of course, 1. If we now double the edge length, four times the amount of light comes to the sensor, since 2 squared equals 4. But if we just want to double the amount of light from one f-stop to the next, we need intermediate values for the edge lengths. And this is where the square root of 2 comes into play. Because 1.412 and so on squared is exactly 2 as we all know. Of course, the aperture of modern lenses is not square, but more or less circular. But this does not change the principle. Because doubling the diameter of the aperture results in 4 times the area. So if we want to double the area of the aperture, we need the intermediate value 1.4 again. And therefore, there are the non-integer values 1.4, 2.8, 5.6 and so on. Also, 11, 22, 45 and 90 actually have decimal places, but for the sake of simplicity, they have been omitted. With the exception of f0.5, the other f-stops are actually integers without decimal places. But that still doesn't explain why small f-stop numbers correspond to a large aperture and large f-stop numbers correspond to small apertures. This, again, is due to a simplification. The correct f-stops would be the reciprocal, for example, 1 over 22 or 1 over 2.8. And then it becomes immediately clear that 1 over 22 is a smaller aperture than 1 over 2.8, for example. The f-stops, especially the largest aperture or the lens speed, can also be defined geometrically. In the case of a simple convex lens, the f-stop, let's call it small f, in this example the largest aperture, simply corresponds to the ratio of the lens diameter, d, to the focal length, capital F. With a lens diameter of 100 mm and a focal length of 200 mm, the result is f2. 
With the same lens diameter, but a focal length of only 100 mm, the f-stop would then be f1. Of course, this is not quite as simple for real lenses with multiple elements, but the principle is the same. If the lens diameter is increased for a given focal length, the aperture is also increased. If we were to increase the lens diameter from 100 mm to 140 mm, for a focal length of 200 mm, the resulting maximum aperture would be f1.4. This is the reason why lenses with the same maximum aperture, but different focal lengths, have different diameters. On the left, a 300 mm lens with f2.8 as its largest aperture. On the right, a 100 mm lens also with the largest aperture of f2.8. Finally, let us consider the theoretical case of f0.5. The focal length of a convex lens with a fixed diameter becomes shorter and shorter with increasing thickness. The shortest possible focal length is obtained with a spherical lens and corresponds exactly to half the lens diameter. Then the focal point would be exactly on the lens surface. And with the well-known relationship that the f-stop corresponds to the ratio of lens diameter to focal length, we get f0.5. However, you can certainly imagine that a spherical lens is no longer practical. Therefore, f0.5 remains a theoretical value. I hope the f-stop numbers don't look so strange to you anymore. As always, thanks for watching.